to Hollywood, and we warned you last Friday this could happen, and it did. One minute after midnight on Saturday, Hollywood writers began firing their agents by the hundreds. This after a new code of conduct deal could not be reached between the Writers Guild of America and the Association of Talent Agents, which represents some 1,000 agencies, including the big four, CAA, ICM, WME. This at issue, packaging fees. Writers say their agents are favoring more lucrative packaging deals with studios and in turn collecting huge sums of money from studios for their clients' projects instead of sharing the proceeds with the clients. Twitter was set ablaze over the weekend with a flurry of writers who were firing their agents. Writer, actor Patton Oswalt of Veep tweeting, quote, I have an amazing agency that reps me, but I have an even better guild which stands for me. Hashtag I stand with WGA. Performer Andy Richter of Conan O'Brien writing, quote, I'm one of those weirdos that really likes his agent, but I went ahead and did this anyway because fair is fair. This whole battle was telegraphed four years ago in one article that's gone viral in Hollywood, written by agent-turned-producer Gavin Pallone, entitled Gavin Pallone on TV's Dirty Secret, Your Agent Gets Money for Nothing. The executive producer of Curb Your Enthusiasm and Gilmore Girls, once a partner at UTA who repped all the Seinfeld writers, distilled the packaging battle Quote, in many cases, the total payments to the agency, Gavin writes, are more than what the agency's clients, whose back it was leveraged upon, makes on the show. Let him say that again. The agency makes more than its client. The Hollywood whistleblower, Gavin Pallone, joining us now in a Fox Business exclusive. Gavin, good to see you. First, to the immediate situation. The agents last Friday warned of total chaos if writers went through with it. What are you saying? Are we seeing chaos? Dogs and cats living together? What's going on there? There's no chaos. There's not going to be any chaos. This is all just a marketing ploy on behalf of the uh, agencies by their, uh, their association, the ATA, to frighten the writers into acquiescing to uh, their demands, or, or at least backing off the demands of the WGA. How serious are the writers here? And what we're looking at is this viral termination of presentation letter that writers got, and they could simply put their agency in the dear column and then say, effective April 13th, you're done. Uh, we know huge names like Grey's Anatomy, Shonda Rhimes, and David Simon, creator of The Wire, fired their agents this weekend. But in a nutshell, why are they throwing down the gauntlet? Well, they have a real... Uh, claim uh, against the agencies. Ultimately, anybody who's negotiating for anything wants unconflicted representation. You, Liz, probably use an outside lawyer when you're negotiating your contract with Fox, not, not uh, somebody who works for your boss. The agencies right, right. in getting package fees are getting direct payments from the studios, and that creates a conflict. And further, and more importantly, the agencies are trying to set up their own studios, and have. And they're starting to produce entertainment and hire their own writers. So then there's nobody in between their representatives and the studio to make a fair deal. And this is probably part of the reason why writer uh, salaries have remained stagnant for at least 10 years, while the demand for writers is probably increased by four times. Yeah, because you now have yeah. Amazon and Netflix, and they're doing content. So um, the objectives for the WGA, they, they don't want this conflict of interest anymore, and yet the agents don't want to give up that trough of money. So agents put out well, they a can't really. on you gotta, Friday. Go ahead. Well, you can't, you know, the, you got to also understand that the big agencies, and they control almost all of the packages, mm -hmm have started selling themselves to private equity and have a goal of eventually probably going public. And that's all based on the idea that they control revenue streams and that these revenue streams are going to increase. And the way it's going to increase is that they're going to use their client relationships to own product, to produce, finance, and actually own the product. And that's how they're going to get a bigger multiple from private equity and from the public markets. Right. Money, so they money, can't money. back down on these issues. Mm. So they offered a counterproposal. Yeah, well, Let me just say this to be fair and balanced. The ATA offered a counterproposal offering the writers, did I get this right, 80% of one percentage point of their profits from packaging fees for a TV series? And somebody said that worked out to less than a penny on every dollar of the writer's back end that agents are getting. Is that, is that a non-starter? That's that's, well, it should be a non-starter because you have to look at the issue in total. It's about a conflict of interest. So they're saying we'll give you a little bit of a kickback on the package fees, which are already diminished because of the nature of the business with streaming services not paying 
profits to anybody anymore. So therefore, they're trying to say, we're going to give you this and let's make the whole issue go away and not giving in anything mm -hmm. on the idea that these talent agencies can become studios, which is the big conflict of interest and where the real money is going to be going forward. Well, we know this. WME is very interested in launching an IPO very soon. They probably all are. I know ICM used to be public, but uh, Ari Emanuel, the famed agent, uh, are they hurting right now? Could this affect, like, do writers really hold the keys and the power right now? Could this affect their ability to take it public? In the short run, it probably won't. Um, the thing is, it's not, the WGI, I do believe, is going about it the wrong way. I think they're right in their claims, for mm -hmm. sure, 100%. Okay. But there's smarter ways of going about it by not putting it on the individual clients to have to fire their agents. And ultimately, they're, even though they're sort of separating from their agents, they're not going and taking new agents, which is what would make WME, you know, uptight, because then they'd really be losing business. As things go on, you know, that might become worse. But most people make deals far in advance, so the agents continue collecting on the deals that have been made in the past. So if this doesn't last very long, they'll probably be okay. I think that the smarter move for the WGA would have been to, uh, to go to court on, on behalf of their members. Yeah. No, to go to court on behalf of their oh. members because there is a fair business statute in the state of California and there's the Sherman Antitrust Act. Right. And it would seem to me and many other lawyers who have already come forward and said this, that uh, that they are in violation of of those statutes and in a lawsuit if you started to open up in discovery the emails of uh, the talent agencies and what see how they find? refer to the package fees and what their strategies are I think it would be very ugly for them and they'd probably have Ooh. to settle beforehand but it's gonna take it's gonna take a smarter strategy and a bigger power move than just saying okay you're not my agent right now although I'm not going to another agency and allow the agencies to continue to collect well, commissions for the short run. I don't think that's going to get it done. It might come to that. might come to that. Gavin Pallone, my high school. Aw, I went to high school and college with him. Love you, Gavin. Thank you very much. We'll be watching all of I it. I miss you, more. Liz. <laughs> I miss you, too.